So before you became a Christian, you were really, you might have been a witch before you became a Christian. You might have been a, a Satanist. You might have been in the occult. You know, it's all wicked. Harry Potter movies, Hollywood movies, you know. So when you're very wicked like that, and you do come to Christ, the Bible says that you reap what you sow. So I prayed for a couple of people before they got delivered, but they still have a lot of sickness. So I'm going to give you a scripture here. Um, because people say, well, why didn't, you know, why doesn't Jesus just heal me? Well, because the Bible says we reap what we, reap what we sow. So everything we, we sow, we're going to reap. So I'm going to give you this scripture. Um, 43. Uh, Luke 23, 39. 23, 39. And um, so these were the two thieves that were hanging on the, hanging on the cross. And one thief said, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. And the other one answered and rebuked him and said, Dost thou not fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man had done nothing amiss. He said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Okay, so. And then um, John chapter 19, 31 to 33. <clears throat> John chapter 19, 31 to 33. So then, um, so the Jews therefore, because it was uh, the preparation, they were, they were getting ready to take the body down, remember? That the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. For the Sabbath day, was uh, a high day so it was a high day so the sabbath they don't want to keep the people on the cross um and then Pilate told the guys hey you know go make sure they're dead and then uh, break their legs remember and then he went they went to the first they went to the first thief and came the soldiers this is 20 uh, 32 and then came the soldiers and broke the legs of the first and broke the others which was crucified with him. So, but before that, Jesus died before that. I read uh, verse 30. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So Jesus already died. And then later on, these guys are still agony. They're still in agony on the cross. <clears throat> And then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first one, broke the legs of the third one. And they looked at Jesus. They didn't have to break his legs because he was already dead. So what I'm getting at is just because Jesus died on the cross, it doesn't matter. You know, we're, we're still going to get what we, we're, we're still going to sow corruption or you're gonna you're gonna reap what you sow. So if you were really really bad into sin before, I hate to say it, but it's gonna take a lot of deliverance, a lot of deliverance, and you're gonna have a lot of sicknesses throughout your life. The Bible says, "Whoever endures until the end will be saved." So yes, I am praying for a couple of people right now that are really bound up by Satan and the demons. And they're wondering why, how come Christ is not healing me? Because you reap what you sow. 
you sow into Satan's kingdom, you're going to reap destruction. So just because Christ died on a cross, it doesn't cancel anything. I mean, he died on a cross for salvation for our soul. And of course, for healing. That's why he gave us the keys for the kingdom. He gave us the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound. So I think that this is my opinion, but I think a lot of people that are really fighting like all these diseases and stuff. Some Christians might look at them and say, hey, you know, you're still sinning or something like that. Or what did you do wrong? That's what we always get when something happens to a brother or a sister in Christ. What do we get? We get the finger pointed at them because they think they're still in willful sin. What if they were a Satanist or an occultist or hooked on pornography or whatever, and then they're reaping what they sow? And you can pray deliverance for them, and it's going to take a very, very, very long time. So not everything is because somebody is in willful sin. Also, generational curses, so... You could have somebody with a really bad, bad life. It's because they didn't break all the curses off their life or they might not know. Like in my case, my father was adopted. I don't know what curses need to be broken off my life, so I just broke them all, everything I could think of. So if you're, if you reap, you reap what you sow. So if you were Satanist before, you're going to have a hard time in life, man, even when you do come to Christ. But he offers deliverance. He offers salvation. So if you're a Christian and you see another Christian being tormented or in very bad sickness, it's not because they're in willful sin. It's because of what their ancestors did and they evidently didn't break the curse off. Or it could be because you reap what you sow. And so... Yeah, get into the Bible, you guys. It's great for the soul. Get into the Word of God. Keep praying deliverance. It could take a long time. And in some instances, Jesus will heal you right away. Bam. We don't know the mind of Christ. We don't know His mind. We're carnal. We're human. So take everything I say in prayer, too. Don't take my word for it. Take it up in prayer. And keep looking up, my friends. I have a feeling turbulent times are coming on this world pretty quick.